My confidence is he gets to 269 and this uh, race gets tossed into the House of Representatives where he does win. Uh, it comes down to Ohio, North Carolina, Florida are a must. Uh, they take him to 253 if you look at the Romney states uh, and, and add back the two that Romney lost in uh, uh, Ohio and Florida. Then he needs 16. Nevada, Iowa, New Hampshire are 16 electoral college. It takes him to 269. He's tied in Nevada, winning in Iowa, and he's down three or four in New Hampshire. That was uh, Congressman uh, Chris Collins talking about how he sees a path for Trump uh, in this race. Yesterday, I brought up a very interesting poll out of the state of Ohio, which is clearly one of the battleground states. Titus Bond is joining us right now from the uh, the firm that uh, put that polling out, uh, Axiom Strategies and uh, the Remington Research Group. Titus, how are you? I'm doing fine. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. Thank you for giving us some time today. No problem. Happy to be here. You guys are doing these polls all over the country, correct? Correct. We started this project looking at battleground counties, and these are individual counties which in, within battleground states that are historically indicative of the eventual statewide presidential winner in that state. And just this week, we, re- we, re- we released a round of polling within these counties and also did statewide on these battleground states just to see if there are any outliers or if any of these counties are going to go against their past historical pattern. Now, are you guys a push polling firm? I mean, do you work for individual candidates? Uh, We do work for individual candidates, um, which may explain the difference in our numbers compared to the public polling firms. We are not a public polling firm. Okay. Um, We are a polling firm for 27 members of Congress multiple state party committees. We are not employed by the Donald Trump campaign or the Republican National Committee. This is more of a research project on our end. Time to time, we release public polling, more so in Missouri, because that's where we are located. Right. But we decided to go look at a national picture here. Interesting. Have you done polls here in Missouri on the current race? Uh, yes, we have. Uh, we do the public polling for the Missouri Times and for the Missouri Scouts. Okay. So we look at, you know, statewide in Missouri, we look at president, governor, and some down ballot and some amendments here. And that's the poll that came out uh, yesterday showing uh, the governor's race to be a pretty tight one, correct? It was only a couple of points between Coster and, and Greitens. That is correct. And just to give your listeners some background, we don't, we're not heavy Republican on what we report. Um, I'm very cognizant of the fact that our firm is judged by our public numbers right. um, when people see the results come in. So it, there's no playing around with that kind of thing. And in the past, we have had uh, Chris Coster up eight points in Missouri. And what we're seeing now and what we're seeing in these battleground states and all across the country, um, I strongly believe in the next week or so, you're going to see all these, all the public polling tighten up. We've already seen it in Nevada and Florida with other public pollsters, um, not including our numbers. But you kind of have this rubber band effect where, you know, a month ago, like all this bad news is coming out and the rubber band starts getting stretched out and Republicans and conservatives and, you know, right leaning moderates are kind of going towards the Democrat side. And now we're at a point where we're 12 days away from Election Day where that rubber band has snapped and voters are starting to think actually about the issues, about the ideology. Um, So that I believe strongly that that's what we're seeing is that. You know, we saw it in 2014 in Kansas with Sam Brownback and Pat Roberts, is that these conservatives historically come home for their candidate, even though they have reservations about that candidate. They they can't go into a ballot box and vote for someone like a Hillary Clinton. They can't go into a ballot box and vote for someone like Chris Coster. And, you know, the issues start becoming bigger than the personality of the candidate. Right. We're talking to a Titus Bond, uh, Titus Bond, I should say, uh, from uh, uh, Remington Research Group out in Kansas City. Now, I want to draw attention, people's attention to this poll you did in Ohio, which shows that Trump up 46 to 42 over Hillary Clinton, about 6 percent undecided, 4 percent going to Gary Johnson. Here, I grew up in Ohio, and here's what I thought was fascinating. It's a battleground state, but the internal numbers that you found there um, don't don't seem to reflect the story that the national media is telling that Donald Trump is losing horribly among women and horribly among Hispanics. When I look at your internals, he's got 36% support among Hispanics in this poll, and the women are split 43 for Trump and 45 for Clinton. 
Yeah, that's right. Um, and I will add that when we do surveys, we are so worried about being wrong that our samples are at least three times the size of anyone else's. This is We did almost 2,000 interviews in this sample, which is a ginormous number, a margin right. of two points, um, so that we can get some statistically significant cross tabs here amongst the different subsets of voters. Um, the so the female and the Hispanic, that helps Trump out there um, because at the end of the day, voters, especially in somewhere like Ohio, um, in that Rust Belt area that has seen some economic depression, they're voting with their wallets. Um, and this Obamacare news was like a direct mail piece from a political firm going out to voters yeah. across the country saying that their rates are going up. Um, you're seeing effect that here. And finally, Donald Trump has a campaign that's about issues and not about personality. Yeah, that's a good point. You know, another thing I'd point out is I know you have a on your website there at Axiom Strategies, you, you, you focused in on Hamilton County, which surrounds the city of Cincinnati down uh, in uh, southwestern Ohio. I grew up in the county north of there, which is Butler County. Um, but the Democratic strongholds in Ohio are Columbus and Cleveland and, to a lesser extent, Youngstown. And the way your poll breaks down, it's a, it's a dead heat in all of these heavily Democratic areas. 44 to 44 in Cleveland, a 43 Trump, 44 Hillary Clinton in Columbus, 42 42 in Youngstown. I mean, in, in years past, the Democrats have dominated those areas. Yeah, and, and that's a little bit. So that's the media markets for those towns, um, which is why you're seeing Trump make up some margins there. So you, you get some some suburban and some rural that are inside of Cleveland's media market. That's the, you know, basically what local TV station they see, okay. uh, which, which, which is how candidates communicate their messages, which is where, you know, if they advertise on Cleveland TV, it gets out to the suburbs in the rural area. But yeah, those are, those are good numbers, especially in the Cleveland media market, which is the biggest media market in the state, uh, reaches more voters than any other media market. Um, those are good numbers for him. And we, you know, we focus on Hamilton County and Sandusky County in Ohio are highly indicative of who's going to win that state. Um, we have Trump up five in Sandusky County and up one in Hamilton. So we believe that it's we're capturing. We were in the field and captured, you know, right as the race was turning towards ideology. And as I said, I expect these. As more public surveys come out in Ohio, you're going to see Trump's lead expand there from where he was plus one or tied earlier. And the so this isn't all good news for Trump we have nationally. Um, we have Virginia and we have Wisconsin basically off the board for him um, that are basically unwinnable at this point. Um, Pennsylvania, Clinton's up three. So it's obtainable, but it's unlikely. And as a firm, we see his pathway. He's tied in Florida. We have him tied. So he has to win Florida. We have him plus three in Nevada. He has to hold that. We have him plus three in North Carolina. He needs to hold that. And we have him plus four in Ohio. So he needs to hold Nevada, North Carolina, and Ohio. He needs to overcome the tie in Florida. And right now we have Hillary Clinton up two in Colorado. So that's see that. in the margin of error. So he needs to get – he needs to – win Colorado. I believe strongly that his path to the presidency is through Colorado. Um, if he doesn't win Colorado, it becomes very, very, very difficult. And this is assuming, you know, he holds other states we've taken off the board in his favor, which include Iowa. Um, so he, he does have a path. There is a strong correlation between um, voter suppression and public polling. Right. Um, uh, as far as like a media narrative goes, I believe Mr. Trump to be accurate in that, you know, these public polls are coming out. And what you see in public polling is that other public pollsters start hurting toward the number. Um, so I expect the hurting on this to start going in Donald Trump's direction over the next few days. Interesting. Yeah, that that's I'm fascinated to hear you say that. I wish I had more time to talk about it because we just had that discussion about that AP poll, that AP GFK poll that came out yesterday showing her with a 14 point lead. I mean, where in the world did they come up with that? I have to ask myself. Yeah, and those are just as, you know, a 14 point lead for Clinton is just as ridiculous as a, you know, 
four point lead for Trump. If I put out a national number that you know the IBD has taken a lot of flack, LA Times has taken a lot of flack for basically showing it a tied race nationally. A fourteen point lead is as much of an outlier as those are. <laughs> so Very, yeah. you know, it, it, yeah, the, it, public polling has the quality has gone downhill, and you know that's why I said our numbers will be different than other public pollsters because we are a you know legitimate polling firm, a national polling firm that works for candidates and campaign. And, sure. You know, Act, Acting Strategies is the largest Republican consulting firm in the country. Uh, Ted Cruz was a client of ours, so there's no love lost between us and Donald Trump. But <laughs> um, so these are okay. these would be numbers. The numbers that we're seeing in publishing would be numbers that a campaign internally would have to make budget decisions and messaging decisions down the stretch. Sure. Titus, I, I've got to run. Titus Bond with the Axiom Strategies. I'd, I'd love to get you on again maybe near the end of next week. Would that be okay? Yep. Give yep. me a holler. We'll reach Happy out. I appreciate your time. Thank right. you very much. Thank you. Fascinating stuff there from a from the guy running one of these polls and how they do it. Uh, three one. 